Hi guys, Karen Miller here. So today we need to have a little talk. People have been asking questions like, oh, you don't cook alkaline anymore. And is this alkaline? The last video I did with the carrots and the broccoli rub and the mushrooms and potatoes, uh, there was a specific comment about uh, whether this was alkaline or not. So this word alkaline, we need to talk about it. It's become very popular over the past two years or so. And I feel like people are using this word very loosely and they don't really understand what it means. You know, somebody said that this is alkaline or this is alkaline electric and people have taken this word and just ran with it and don't understand what it really means. So we need to get away from the word alkaline and start thinking in terms of alkaline forming. So alkaline forming foods and alkaline forming minerals. So there are minerals that are alkaline, right? So you have calcium, you have magnesium, you have sodium, potassium, and manganese. Those are the alkaline forming minerals. These minerals, they bind acid. It's also called acid binding. So if your body is very acidic because you've been eating a lot of acidic foods or acid forming foods, and then you start eating foods that are rich in those minerals that I just mentioned, those um, acid binding foods, they bind the acids in your body and then it comes out into your urine. The opposite is also true, right? So you have the acid binding or alkaline forming, and then you have the acid forming and alkaline binding. So these minerals are minerals like uh, sulfur and, um, oh my God, I, you know, I'm speaking extemporaneously. I don't remember. I'm going to put it in the description, but the opposite is true. So you have these acid binding, alkaline binding foods, which are acid forming. So they bind the alkaline. So then you have the acid in your urine. So we have to think in terms of alkaline forming and acid forming. So I wanted to give you two examples of, 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 of acid and alkaline. So let's talk about the alkaline binding minerals. So I told you about the acid binding, which is a good thing because it, it takes the, the acidic foods and like traps it, right? It traps it and then it gets out of your body, the acid, it removes the acids from your body. So those minerals, calcium and magnesium are, you know, the top ones. And then you have the alkaline binding or acid forming. Okay. The alkaline binding, those minerals, uh, those minerals like phosphorus, chlorine, um, bromine, uh, sulfur, phosphorus, you know, I think I mentioned phosphorus before, but these minerals, they bind the alkaline. You see? So this is why balance is important. So because a food has a certain value, which I'm going to give you some examples in a minute, because certain foods have a certain value, it doesn't mean that it's acidic or it's acid forming. It could be alkaline forming. It depends, you see? And a very good example of that is the beans, which I did a bean dish recently. And I mentioned to you that it's important to uh, sprout the beans because beans are very acidic. And I know a lot of people who are on this so-called alkaline diet, they eat a lot of garbanzo beans and they keep saying it's alkaline, it's alkaline. It is not alkaline. All beans are acidic. 
very acidic. It's 3.5 on the pH scale. Garbanzo beans, aduki beans, black beans, red beans, kidney beans, you know, lentils, mung beans, all of these dried beans are acidic. But the value is increased, I think, by 2, 2.0, when it's sprouted. So this is why I really want to impress upon you when you're cooking beans, to please make sure that it's sprouted. Not only to raise the value, the alkaline value, but to, like I mentioned when I was doing the recipe, a lot of people are allergic to, to beans or it, it's very gassy. So sprouting of the beans would help with that and also adding certain herbs to the, to, to the food would make it easier to digest and, and raise the alkaline value. So that's a very good example. So all beans are acid forming, but when you treat it a certain way, it raises the level a little bit and becomes alkaline forming. You see, and beans are very high in magnesium and magnesium is an alkaline forming mineral. So because something is acid forming or because it's a hybrid doesn't mean that all the value has disappeared from it. So this is what we need to realize and we need to do our research. We need to read. And we need to not just take everything somebody says to us as, as gospel. You know, you don't have to take what I say as gospel. Go and do your own research. You know, and I know many of you don't have the time. You're busy. But this is what I do. I'm a teacher deep down inside. And I do a lot of research. And I read a lot. And I'm homeschooling a child. So I have the opportunity to do research and to learn and to examine and to, to analyze and to decide whether something makes sense or not, or whether something is right or wrong, or whether or, or the way it was approached. I think this whole alkaline thing, I think it was approached the wrong way and certain information wasn't given because there are a lot of idiosyncrasies to this whole alkaline, electric, alkaline, you know, because we're not using that other word with alkaline. We have to start thinking of alkaline forming. So another example uh, is lemons, lemons and limes. Lemons are even much higher on the alkaline on the pH scale than limes. Limes are 7.0, lemons are 7.5. Now, we all know that these uh, fruits, you know, lemons, limes, grapefruit, oranges, these are all acidic. These are all acidic, but yet they are alkaline forming. And lemons, by the way, and limes have a lot of calcium. This is what makes it alkaline forming, even though it's very acidic. It's a very, those things are very acidic, but yet once they get into your system, it becomes very alkaline forming. So again, there are so many foods that I had eliminated for a long time because I was following a list and I don't want to get into this list thing again you know what I'm talking about and I eliminated those foods and then I found out that first of all it was not sustainable and second of all it didn't make sense so I changed and it's okay when you know better you do better but you don't have to do what I do and you don't have to believe what I'm saying. Again, do your own research. But again, you cannot eliminate a whole variety of foods from your diet, especially when you are on a plant-based diet. You, you, you cannot do that because it's not going to work. You see? And I know some of you have 
jumped off the bandwagon and you're probably eating meat again but you know i'm not gonna judge i don't think we should judge we are all different our system is all different you know uh, another thing i wanted to talk about about this alkaline thing and this is why i want us to approach this holistically because we cannot just be thinking about the food. We have to think about our emotions. We have to think about our psychology. We have to think about our emotions. We have to think about our physical state. We have to think about our thoughts, the people we surround ourselves with. So, because if you are stressed out, okay, depending on your family situation, you might be in a bad relationship, you're stressed out, your job, you, you working hard, you, you have problems with this or that, with your children, whatever the case may be, you could be eating all the alkaline forming foods in the world. If you are not happy, if you are having problems in your life, if your emotional and psychological well-being are compromised, you are going to have a very acidic body. I don't care how many alkaline forming foods you eat. And this is why if you have those kinds of stresses in your life, this is even more reason to eat more alkaline forming foods and take supplements. Calcium magnesium supplement is a, it's, it's a very good supplement. It's, it's just excellent, especially when you're under stress, but that's another story and I don't want to come off as giving medical advice because I don't want to get into trouble. But anyway, we have to think of our self-care. I don't want to use the word healthcare because healthcare nowadays, you know, it means going to the doctor and getting drugs and synthetic drugs and being addicted and, you know, it's a vicious cycle. So I want to start using the word self-care. Let's start taking care of ourselves and taking responsibility and not depending on the government to do that, not depending on a doctor to do that. Your food is your medicine. Now granted, our food system has been compromised because the soil with the, the synthetics, with the pesticides, the synthetic fertilizer that they spray, all of these things have, um, reduced uh, the nutrients in the soil so our foods are not as nutritious as it used to be so this is why I think it's important to maybe you know you take some supplements because we might be talking about alkaline alkaline and I'm taking all that I'm, I'm eating all these foods that are alkaline but you also have to think where did this food come from? When you go to your supermarket or the health um, or the, the farmer's market, you don't know how this food was grown unless you ask, especially at the farmer's market, you could ask the farmer they, and they're very willing to talk to you. They love to talk to you about their food and you know, they care about it. But as far as the, the supermarket and most of us shop at the supermarket, you don't know where this food came from. You don't know how it was grown. You don't, you don't know, you know, whose hands it, it passed through. You don't know anything about it. So we, I want us to start thinking about our health and our self care in a holistic manner. The food, our physical health and our mental health. And exercise is super, super important. You have to exercise, you have to move your body, you have to get strong, you have to get flexible. That would make a big, big difference in your life. So it's not just the food, okay? So moving forward, you know, we have a lot to talk about. Please join me on my Patreon. I'm going to be doing a lot of work there. It's only a dollar or two. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of talks about this we have a lot to talk about regarding your health okay i'm going to be talking about the water and distillation of water because i'm drinking distilled water and not spring water and i think i explained this uh but almost a year ago when i did a fast and i was talking about the spring water 
and um, we, we have to talk also about 5G because a lot of people are getting excited about 5G and all they think about is speed. It's not just about speed. The experts are saying that it's a weapon, that it destroys your DNA. So people are getting excited because all they care about is downloading their movies faster. This is the least of your problems. Okay? So do research on that. And maybe write to your Congress people and tell them that you don't want 5G. People are demonstrating all over the world about no 5G. But some of us are so uninformed. We are, you know, so much like sheep. We don't know what's going on in the world. And we just, you know, absorb everything that we see on the TV and take it as something good. It's not good. If you have a phone next to your ear, First of all, we, we have known now for many years that it causes cancer. This is why people are encouraged to use their earbuds. But think about it. If you have something to your ear 24 hours a day, there are no cables, no wires attached to it, but yet you can speak to someone from miles away. Where do you think this energy is coming from? This is microwave energy that is killing you. I mean, most of us have stopped using our microwave. I, I, don't ha I have not had a microwave no, now for over a year. Two years probably, time flies, I don't remember. But we stopped using our microwaves. So you stop using your microwave, but you have a phone next to your ear all day long. That doesn't make sense. So we, we need to think about what we're doing, all right? so. Join me on Patreon. Uh, this is where I'm going to be doing most of this and I'm going to be exercising and, you know, moving forward. We're going to approach this holistically, physically, emotionally, mentally. And we're going to be talking more about these uh, alkaline forming foods and acid forming foods. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Love you guys. Take care. I hope I you know, explained a little bit so that you understand, you know, about these alkaline forming foods and the minerals that are alkaline forming. And because you eat something that is so-called acidic, doesn't mean that it, it, it metabolizes in your body as acidic. All right. So take care guys and see you in the next video.